Hello everyone, this is Jacob Folger, Artist Sculptor, and today we are going to make this mermaid. And this is a pretty detailed tutorial. I do need to tell you though that this piece took me about three days to make. So uh, I, I do a lot of the, a lot of the tutorial is done in uh, four times regular speed, um, so that the video won't be a three day long video. <laughs> Um, but I also have narrated sections, um, and so there's a, some of that, and also this is a, uh, complete, uh, sculpt and finish, so, um, we, on the video, on the tutorial, we will do this, uh, complete the piece with this finish you see here, which is a blue verdigree or blue patina finish, and, uh, yeah. So, um, I'd like you to come along, join me, and, uh, if you could, give the video a like, and subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so you get a notification when I upload. So, yeah, let's get started.
Okay, I had a little issue with the camera. Um, I've done a little bit more work on the face, so uh, what I wanted to show you was if you uh, put just a little bit of water on your brush, dab most of it off. You don't want a lot of, uh, lot of water on it. If you go around and start to smooth the face, it will help to kind of bring out, uh, well, it's more feminine quality to it. And instead of using your fingers to, uh, you know, move the clay and that sort of thing, using your brush might be a good idea at this point. Just sort of go over the mouth and kind of make it more subdued. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's definitely looking far more feminine now by doing that a little bit there. And you can also take, uh, on my uh, mermaids, I always, I always try to do the eyes closed. So I'll take the tool and I'll just put a little indentation there. What I do is when I do the other side, I turn it upside down. That way I can see the other side and do the eye the same way. Like that. And you can kind of just push on them a little bit to look, make them look a little bit more natural. And then you can take your brush and just soften that. So we, we kind of got it now pretty well. Okay. So we're we'll working on the body now. And we're gonna
Okay, I recommend, uh, you know, wetting your clay fairly frequently. You can bring out the base here. You can just take a brush with a little bit of water on it and touch. I'll show you. Just take a little bit of water on it and just touch it here and there. Just to, uh, I'll bring it out.
I just wet her again just to let you know. I mean, I try to do that fairly frequently. I'm extending the tail here.
Okay, this is where I am now. Uh, I've been working on the hair. And <clears throat> I took uh, my ball tool. I just had this, you know, big blank stone that she's sitting on. And I just uh, took the ball tool and, uh, you know, drew in this, kind of tugged in this uh, uh, spiral shape, spiral design with the ball tool and then smoothed it with uh, a brush. So I'll be working more on that. Um, so that's what I do. I use a ball tool and then uh, a wet a wet brush and just uh, smooth it out. So that kind of just adds more interest to the piece because otherwise the stone was just, you know, had nothing going on really. Uh, so. You got all this, it's basically a blank canvas, you know, and there's so much opportunity uh, to uh, do something really sweet with it, so, yeah. As far as the hair goes, I'm going to show you basically how I'm doing that. You can see this side isn't really developed yet. I've kind of got this side looking pretty good. As you can see, it looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, the other side is still being worked on. Um, and so, let me show you basically how I'm doing this. I'm going to take a, 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 a needle of clay, like this, and uh, <clears throat> just uh, put it on the sculpture, like this. Kind of blend it in. And... Uh, just mold it in there, kind of pinch it off there. And, uh, and then, move it out a little bit. Um, I'll take a, like a, maybe a ball tool or something like that and kind of blend it in. Still, you know, kind to do a, uh, you know, keep nice falling lines, so uh, let's see, the idea. Like that. And, uh, you can move it, so you can take your finger and move it in the direction you want it to go. And the idea, of course, was to make it curving and, you know, kind of stylized and pretty and that sort of thing. And then you can take a, a paintbrush, a wet paintbrush. And I don't recommend having it soaking wet. I dab off some of the paint uh, because then it would have better drag on the clay. And uh, just brush it. And you can actually use the, the brush as a, in a way, as a sculpting tool as well. And you just basically brush it until you get it to where you want it to be. And it, it does, it takes a long time really to, to do this, so. Just, uh. So take your time, and uh, so I'm, what I'm going to do now at this point is show you bits of what I'm doing and kind of update you as I go, because right now actually the sculpture is, I'm into maybe eight hours, maybe ten hours on it so far, so I really obviously can't make a video that long, so I'm going to just show you as I go what I'm doing, and, uh, and then we'll Hopefully you'll get lots of information from this and be able to make your own beautiful uh, mermaid. So we'll come back in a little while.
Okay, I'm going to be moving the mermaid, and what I did was I got a bigger board to work on, and I put a slab of clay down um, in preparation. Okay, I have the mermaid ready to move, and I'm going to use a uh, cutting wire, clay cutting wire. It looks like this. Very thin, very strong wire. And I'm just going to put it along the base, and... Uh, Kind of holding it down with my fingers, and I'm going to just cut her away from the board. Make some work sometimes. And uh, so I got it away from it. And I get some, some boards here. And I'm going to destroy it. And score the bottom of her. Doctor. And then I'm going to uh, get some water. And with this, and with this, and put it on. And then I can start working on it again. And now she'll be even bigger than she was before. But we do. We shall pursue this and hopefully come up with a nice mermaid. So moving her really worked out to be a very good thing. Um, because especially for the hair, I was really confined uh, to that board that she was on before. And it really helped to move it uh, a lot, so I have a lot more space to work on the hair. And you can see what I did here. I basically extended it out, just like I showed you before, laying on the of clay and then sculpting it in, and then smoothing it with a brush. Um, and uh, I was also able to bring the tail out uh, some and uh, kind of make that more flowing and uh, pretty and uh, yeah so uh, it's going pretty well I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the base uh, I think probably I'm going to do something similar to the design I did on the stone here um, and then also um, I cut through here I put a hole there um, it was it's not that hard I just I uh, I had a thin wall in there, and I was trying to maintain it, so when I'd be on this side, I'd smooth it out, and then I'd go on the other side, and it would, uh, somehow my finger was pushing the clay uh, out on the other side, so I said, ah, I'll cut through, and just uh, make a nice, sweet uh, hole there. So yeah, it's uh, working out pretty good, and uh, I think probably, uh, Hopefully, I'll have this finished and soon, and, uh, um, yeah, so, while I've got you here, um, why don't we play around with the base, um, so, oops, I'm sorry about that, okay, yeah, um, so I'm thinking maybe, a, a nice, uh, kind of, swirl kind of thing going on like so maybe it could be uh, waves or uh, sitting on calm water 
on just using the, the wall tool, which I find that I use a lot more than the uh, the other tools. Remember, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you've seen these tools that I've had for many, many years. Uh, you know, I find myself using the ball tool, really, a whole lot more um, now these days. Um, it's really kind of a nice tool. So, yeah, something, uh, I'm just uh, kind of, this is kind of like designing, so to speak. Um, and, uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here, but I'm thinking about like little wave pools or something like that. Um, just adding some kind of fun texture to it. And then if I don't like it, I can erase it by just running my finger over it or running a brush over it. I'm really thinking I'd rather have maybe a spiral design like I have on the stone. So I'll just clear off what I just did. You know, the main thing to do is to keep the clay moist. Um, I do uh, I frequently touch the face. I'm doing it right now. You can't see, but I am. And I uh, want to make sure she stays really moist. Um, so, yeah, maybe a, a nice uh, spiral design here. So, like that. Try to make it very, you know, nice and flowing. Have it go like that. And then maybe just do kind of nice waves coming off of that. that maybe. I like that. And I could even maybe have the hair, you know, this, maybe especially this hair right here come pulling down. How would I do that? Uh, roll a thin noodle, you know, the thinner than that, and then add it on here. I mean, you can have a lot of fun. Let's be creative. <laughs> yeah. You can need, you can make the hair be the spiral, really, if you want to. But yeah, it's, you know, having the base, <clears throat> adding to the base, uh, I was really confined with the hair. And I was having a lot of trouble getting the energy and the inspiration to work on it because it was so confined, I couldn't know what to do with it really. I was having a lot of trouble with that. So we can see how I did that. And that could, you know, extend around and be um, actually the hair making the spiral. It's really a lot of fun. It's really fun. And 
just relaxing. Um, the main thing is not to get so wrapped up in it that you can't leave it alone or, you know, just get frustrated with it. Um, you know, because you can, you can have little problems with it, especially like I was having earlier with the, uh, um, you know, the fact that I didn't have, uh, excuse me, I'm getting a wet brush here. Um, I didn't have, you know, enough room to kind of work on the hair, and that was kind of frustrating, so. Mm. We're just using <clears throat> the brush to uh, smooth that out and make it nice and mellow, but, um, you know, detailed, it has there's plenty of detail there, so it's interesting, so when, when this piece is done, and when people look at the sculpture, they're going to see a lot of this kind of thing, and, you know, it'll be very pleasing to the eye, and uh, be enjoyable to look at, you know, rather than just taking a glance and saying, oh, that's nice, you know, I mean, actually, People are probably going to look at it for a while because there's going to be so many really cool things going on. And, you know, you can do that. You can definitely do that with a sculpture. Felt pretty good, but it's definitely very nice. So, uh, yeah. uh, clean your brush often, keep the clay off of it, and you know, just uh, keep keep working on it. I think uh, over here, by this uh, tin, right here, this part of the tin. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm still working on the piece, but I'm cleaning up the edges here. And I'm just taking a sharp sculpting tool and going around and cleaning up the, uh, the edge. I just want to show you how I do that. So basically, I just cut along the edge and, uh, and then kind of pull the paint, you know, the uh, the clay away, kind of clean off that the board a little bit. And uh, so I go around the whole sculpture and do that. Um, I think. Probably, uh, I'll be finishing this up soon. And, uh, then we're gonna do a finish on it. Bird Reed Bronze finish, which will be, I think, just gorgeous. And I'm looking very much forward to that. And then once you, uh, get the edge clean like that, you can take a wet brush, small brush, 
dab off most of that water and just um, go along and uh, smooth that edge really nice. We get the idea, right? Okay. Okay, so I am deciding pretty much to call this piece and uh, finish it up. And um, what I'm doing now is instead of smoothing it, I am adding a very fine, light, soft, um, Texture. Because I just love texture and I think it will be really pretty with the finish. So I'm using the ball tool uh, to, to do that. And I'm going to go around the entire sculpture and add this real fine kind of uh, flowing uh, texture to it. And what I do is I clean the tool. I keep the tool clean. I just clean it with my fingers. I guess you use a bag too if you want to. And uh, the whole sculpture will have this nice fine um, texture on it. So that will probably take several hours and <clears throat> You know, of course to smooth it, you know, but sometimes it's just nice uh, to do something a little bit different. And I think uh, having spent so much time on this piece and the hours and hours, I uh, I think this will be a nice touch. So I want to show that to you, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're finishing up. Um, Probably what I'll do after I'm all done with this and the texturing here, um, I will leave it out to dry overnight and plan on doing a finish in the morning. I think it will be dry enough at that point. So, that will be fun. I hope you stick around for that. Okay, the sculpting portion of the mermaid is finally done. And uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of her all the way around so you can have a look. Um, here we go. So now we're going to do a burgundy finish on her, and uh, this will uh, look like bronze is the intention, and we'll get started in just a minute. Okay, we're back and we've got the mermaid is black now and we're going to make a wash. I'm going to use two colors, uh, bright aqua green and cerulean blue hue uh, mixed together um, with a little bit of water and just mix it up like that. And uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be kind of blue, it'll be alright. And uh, you can just add, you know, a little bit of water 
like that. You can dip your brush in water and just kind of bring it in and uh, add it to it. Mix it up really good, make sure there's no gobs in there or anything like that. And then uh, you just paint it on, so yeah, it's going to be a blue, kind of a blue patina. And uh, work it into all the detail. Um, all. I'm just going to do the front side of her right now, just to, you know, for demonstration purposes, and uh, then later I'll finish her off. You can wet your brush every once in a while and just kind of get it all wet to keep it from drying out on you. A little oil in the brush. Help it go on. I'll work it into all the detail, the eyes, the mouth hair what your brush every once in a while go over again just to kind of keep her wet Now it's easier on smaller pieces. You got a big piece like this, it's a little bit different. So, this is kind of what we're looking for there. And then you want to take a, uh, a rag or you use a paper towel and this uh, kind of you can patter um, like this. And you're kind of hoping to leave her. Uh, yeah, I missed the button here. Yeah, so uh, you want to leave the, uh, the patina in the recess area. And uh, you can also go back and, uh, you know, touch up and kind of, uh, you know, make sure it's definitely heavier in the recessed areas, like uh, in between your hairs and um, in places where uh, the patina might pool naturally, uh, if it was out in the weather. This is an indoor finish, by the way, okay? And of course, the uh, sculpture is air dry clay, so it's definitely not waterproof. Oh, yeah, I can just get it to in the recess area so, the, so there'll be some contrast. And I'm going to show you how to uh, bring out the, uh, the high points in just a minute. So don't worry if you. If you're unable to uh, uh, get that contrast between the black and the blue, blue green, we'll, we'll take care of that in just a few minutes here. The main thing is is to get that those recess areas filled in. Okay, we'll give that a few minutes to dry, and I'll uh, be back in a minute. Okay, so we got that uh, green patina in there pretty good. Um, and so next, the next step is to take uh, some black paint and a brush, 
and kind of dry brush the high points. Um, so you get a little paint on your brush. And this, uh, b both of these, all the paints that I'm using today are Utrecht Studio Series Acrylic. And if you look in the video description down below the video, all the things that we're using in this project will be in the tool and supply list there. Um, so take a look at that. So yeah, so now I just um, go around and um, paint the high points black. And it's okay if you, you know, get a little bit in the uh, low points as well. It's not going to really hurt anything. But the, the main thing is just to try to have some contrast between the, uh, uh, the recessed areas and the uh, um, high points. I'm just kind of doing it lightly. If you get like an area here where it's got detail, you can drag your brush across it as opposed to like going like that and that will achieve the results that you want. And that's kind of what we want, what we want for this. There we go. And we'll come back in a minute and make it pop. Okay, the next step of our finish is uh, we're going to apply uh, Johnson's Paste Wax and Pearl X Pigments in Antique Bronze. And uh, what I do is I keep the uh, bronze in a lid like this. That's what it looks like. It's a very fine powder. And um, what I do is uh, put my finger into the wax and kind of swirl it around on the wax and get it nice and moist with the wax. And then um, I don't want any gobs on my finger, okay? So I'll I'll just swirl my finger like that. And then I'll dip it into the bronze like this. And then I'll swirl that. And now every time I go into the bronze or the wax, I always swirl after my, my thumb to my forefinger. See how it makes it really fine? And then I just highlight the high points. And, uh, yeah, it just makes it really quite beautiful. I'm going to get a little bit more wax. A little bit more bronze. Roll my finger to my thumb. And apply it. So you're basically going to all the areas that you did with the black. You want all the high points, so you well, you can, you know, mix it up a little bit and, and um, maybe do it heavier in some places and lighter in other places. I recommend going for kind of just a light touch. like that and uh, what we'll do is wait a few minutes for that to dry and we'll do the secret ingredient in just a minute okay it's been about 10 minutes since we applied the uh, uh, pearlite pigments antique bronze to it and the thing you have to keep in mind about this is uh, it is paste wax so you can take a soft cloth like this and uh, buff it gently 
and you can see, look at that, isn't that something? See how that comes out? Yeah. And then buff it. I just buff it gently. And I don't do it all over, I just do, kind of do it here and there to kind of make it really pop in certain areas. You know, people just look at it and they say, oh my god, are you serious? Yeah, it's really, really quite beautiful. And I don't know if the video does it justice, but yeah, there's something, something else. I love, love, love the finish. Okay, we're going to do some close-ups so you can see all the details. So that's about it. Um, this uh, <laughs> turned out to be a lot more than I really intended. Uh, the uh, the sculpture ended up taking me about three days to um, you know to make, and uh, so. But I I think she turned out quite nice, and uh, I hope you got a lot out of this, and uh, that you will make a mermaid of your own. And if you do, please send me a picture. Uh, my email address is in the about section of my channel page at Jake Bolger, and uh, so please definitely send me a picture. And uh, also, uh, you can give the video a like, that would be great. Uh, share it with your friends and family, and on any social media you might like to share it on. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment uh, or question, and I will reply. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts about this tutorial, and uh, if you found it useful. Um, if you have ideas for something that you would like me to do a tutorial on, please let me know. You can leave that in the comment section. And I'll, I, I do get a lot of inspiration from people's input, so yeah, I'd love to hear what, you have, uh, what ideas you might have. And uh, if you like this kind of content and want to see more of it, uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification when I upload. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.